Hello everybody, we party from across the shock and it's Medford time. You know I bought this Medford after my mother passed and we got our, we, uh, got our inheritance. Um, it's the second expensive knife I've bought. It's the most expensive knife I've ever bought and I don't think that'll ever be, in fact I can tell you now, it'll never be uh, replicated unless I win the lottery. So it comes in the nice box with the Made in America flag on it. Greg is a very patriotic man and I like that. I'm patriotic, different country, but I like patriotism. I like people to be patriots. This is the letter that annoys everybody. But to be honest with you, I've read it and I've accepted what's in it. Not a problem. And look, when you've bought your Medford, no matter what anybody thinks of that letter or Greg or whatever, that means when you've invested this much money, to me anyway, when I've invested this much money, I have accepted everything that he has said in that letter. So I can't argue about it. I can't dispute it. I can't mock it. I've just accepted it for what it is. It's Greg's. It's his company. It's his. He puts it in. He's never changed. He has never took a step backward. He has just kept it there. So once you've paid this amount of money, you've got it and you've accepted it. So that's it. That's that argument out of the way. Whatever is said in there, you can laugh, you can joke. And I do the, the wording and all. I see the funny side of it. But the serious size is... <coughs> Greg makes his knife to very high specifications and he doesn't want you to wreck them. He will fix it if it goes wrong. Not a problem. No questions asked as long as you haven't broke the rules. So there you go. That's it. If you buy a car and they tell you don't tinker with the engine, bring it to us, we'll fix it. Would you tinker with the engine? No, you wouldn't. You would just take it. So there we go. That's that finish now as far as I'm concerned. In the box you get this beautiful waterproof case. It is... A really lovely design with MK10, MKT on the front of it. Medford Knife and Tool. You get his lovely little business card. Really is nice, I have to say. And your lifetime warranty. Again, if you haven't read that before you bought it, there's something wrong with you. Greg gives enough information out about his knives on his videos that you can uh, get. So, there we go. That's the box. The only thing we've got to see now is the knife. And here it is. This is the Slim Midi. It is just a, a, a scaled down version of the Marauder. It's slightly different, but it is that Marauder. And it just looks like it anyway. Listen to that. Right. This is just... This is not a knife I can flick open yet. I haven't had it this long. And one of the things Greg says is don't force it. To, to break in, just do it in time, and that's what I've done. As I've used it, I just I don't sit at night and flick it all night. Sally shouts at me anyway. I can't open it one hand and listen to that. It's just amazing, beautiful knife. Sally's just in the dogs. She had the wee dogs down the beach. We're at the caravan. So now, what can I tell you about this knife? Well, we'll do the measurements and get it out of the way. Look, here we go. It is just under eight inches just under eight inches it has a cutting length of just over three inches a blade length in total of three and a half a handle length of four and a quarter it is just a lovely knife look at the thinness of this knife now let's get the measurements done and then we we'll move on from that and oh sorry about that we'll move on from the measurements so across the spine of the knife it is 0.12 which is about 3.2 millimeters it is across the back of the knife, 3.9, say, um, 0.4 of an inch. So it's well under that half an inch, which is the average for knives. And this is a Medford. This is a Medford. Well under the average. You don't say that about Medfords very often. But that blade is just stunning. There's a hand-done hollow ground. Now, this is a specialty that Greg and a few others have. He does it, where the, the ground lines in this, this is done by experts. This is not done by somebody off the street who's going to grind the knife out. Greg does this by hand. Most of this knife is put together by hand. Obviously, you got the CNC, the, the water jet cuts out the, the, the blanks. But the rest of it is done by hand. 
most of it. And all the materials are made in the USA. He doesn't go anywhere else. So there is a cost for that. And it's simple. If you've got expertise like Greg has and who teaches other people that expertise, that you've got to pay for it. And I'm afraid that's just what I've learned in my little short knife journey. You have to pay for it. I have one other high-end knife, and this is my hinderer that I bought after my father died. It's still a treasured possession. I absolutely love it. Do not regret it for one second. So this is my second one. And it will be, I'll never pay this much again. It was my one and only chance to get it. It was between this and a Chris Reeve, and I'm happy I chose uh, Medford. I really am. This knife is different. It's not, there's not a whole lot of people have got these. And that's the nice thing. There's not a whole lot. Medford's still a young company. If you put it in comparison to Chris Reeve, it's still a young company. And it's still being driven. And the passion, you can nearly feel and see the passion in the knives. Greg's style is, nobody's copying it. It's Greg's style. Do you know what I mean? It is absolutely stunning. Now, let's just give you a weight of it. And again, keep thinking in mind, that when I used to think of Medford's, I kept thinking of big, heavy, thick knives. Because that's what they were. But he has now sort of, he's now making for more people. 4.2, 4.2 ounces. That is just so nice. 119 grams. So, Come on, that, that's four. If you can't carry a four inch knife, there's something wrong with you. Especially when it's as thin as this. This is all metal. There's no relief inside these. This is just, it's only four inches. And there's no relief. This is just a solid knife. If I can bring this up to you and just show you. The tolerance on this knife is just unbelievable. If I can show you in between. You literally... There's next to nothing between that blade and the side. Can you see that? The tolerances are amazing. Amazing. The lockup is perfect for a new knife with a frame lock. It is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It is silky smooth. Well, it's not silky smooth. It's very smooth. But very controlled. This is not something I have tried. That I can only get it to about there. I don't need to. Do it. This is a working knife. This is not a fidget tool that I'm going to sit and play with all knife. This is a knife that I'm going to take out and I'm going to use and I'm going to work. You have a beautiful big choil up, so you can get right up close if you want. But the handle for me is perfect. The handle is just lovely. I get a full grip on the handle and I can sneak up if I want to. These are not thumb studs. This is where the knife makes contact. If you can see, listen to that. It is so solid. The shape, the handle shape. At first I thought this is going to be a bit of a, a, a small back to it. But to be honest with you, it is built. So there's my finger. And I have quite long fingers as well. And they're not digging into each other. And when it's up in there, it is the most comfortable knife to hold really is now is it the most comfortable knife full stop no i'm talking about a knife that is built like this this is all metal now all the edges have been chamfered not greatly but they've been chamfered but this is a knife where you're going to want if you're going to do a lot of heavy work you're going to put a pair of gloves on to be honest with you but for the sort of work i'm going to do i don't need to that is perfect that's not going to give me hot spots I can still use away at this for the time that I would use and I'm not going to get hot spots. But if you put a pair of gloves on, it's probably better for this type of a knife if you're going to hard use it. EDC, no problem whatsoever. And I have been using it as an EDC knife. Strangely, I clean it before I bring it on. So, <laughs> and I sharpened it. <laughs> so look, this. Let's let's talk about the downsides that I found to this knife. The frame, the, the frame lock itself, there isn't a relief on this side to get across. So you, for me, you put the fat of your finger in, push it across. If you're a wimp and you can't do that sort of thing, 
don't buy a Medford because you literally do put your finger in the fat of it and push it across. Tim, that's the way I've been doing it because I find it difficult doing it this way. So I just put the fat in, push it across and it locks up absolutely perfectly. But it's that sound and you know that, I mean, look, there's nothing to this now. If you get two slabs of metal, your slab of metal is a blade. There's nothing except his precision that makes this knife. And that's the same with any knife that's precision. The the Chris Reeves knives, it's precision. And Greg excels in precision. That's his thing. That is his thing. And that's why he backs his knife for life, that he will repair, fix, do anything to it for the rest of your life, as long as you're not abusing it. And if you're going to abuse a $500, or as I had to pay over here, £500 knife, then you're crazy. <laughs> you know, you're crazy. I mean, even in his wording, he, he, he doesn't say you can't pry. He's in heavy prying. So, I mean, this blade tapers down to not what you would call a fine point. Well, it is quite a fine point. But, I mean, so this little knife, look at this. I was doing this the other day with a traditional. This is a great knife to get in and you could remove scalps with this and how many Greg Medford knives would you have thought you'd have used for a scalp when I, when I first came around a few years ago they just weren't about they were all big knives that's the only ones I'd ever seen this behind the edge at a quick measure it's about 22 thousandths behind the edge which is absolutely fine for a work knife I have no intention of taking it anymore and it goes pretty well you know pretty far back but I mean this is never going to be, um, but you know, actually, I, I'm sitting saying that, and, and I'm sitting saying that you couldn't, but you could slice anything with this knife. This knife is just like a little razor. It really does take a good edge. It's S35VN, so there can be nothing wrong with a blade steel, as long as it's heat treated right. And Greg has been proved that he does his own heat treat, so he does it right. He knows what he's putting out. And, and I'm going back to Greg because Greg takes responsibility for his whole factory and his, his knife, his product. So I'm using him to go back to, you know, because he does check every knife before it comes out. So he, he puts himself in the firing line and he takes the flack if he gets any. He'll give it back again, but there you go. So am I glad I bought this knife? I am so glad. It's a different knife to have on my channel. It's a great knife for, for unusual comparisons to come. Um, I don't see that many knife collectors with a Medford on YouTube. Well, they'll buy them and then they sell them and they pass them on. But an awful lot on YouTube don't keep them. This is a keeper for me. I'm not going to spend that money and give it away to somebody else. This I got because I wanted the experience of having this knife. Of having seen the man, having watched what he's like with his, his family, his wife. I mean, the, he's a unit. His family is a unit. So I, I back that family unit. I, I just think that's lovely. So what's it like? Here's a knife that it's near enough exactly the same size. The 940. It's exactly the same size as the 940. And you know what I think of my 940. So am I going to use the hard, hard use this 940 ever again? No, I have this. A Benchmade bug out. Just a little bit smaller, but it's just a comparison to let you see what sort of size. It's not that much smaller. And then another one that's popular at the moment is the little Para 3. And again, not that much smaller. So this knife fits in an EDC category of knives. I picked these because they're EDC knives. This is an EDC knife, but it's an EDC knife that can take a damn good thrashing. It can take a damn good thrashing. And it's just, to me, I just love it. It's tumbled. The titanium's dyed blue. It's tumbled. It's tumbled on the blade. If you see, let me just show you, if you can see the blade grind on that. And if you see the way this grind goes up and round, it's not all this way. It's up and it's actually turned by hand. That is a skill. That is an art that not many makers are doing now. The fuller, I love this little fuller. I know people say you get bits of dirt in it. Well, clean the blooming thing. It seems to be a thing at the minute with dirt. <laughs> I just clean it. It's only a little fuller, for goodness sake. 
I love the Medford. It just has the big M and the S designates it as S35VN. The studs are so nicely done. They're absolutely perfect with either side. And now this is what I liked on the Medford, right? You've got your frame lock. Watch this when I bring this back out. This is just so perfectly done. It sits so perfect. Now this is a, a sprung bit of metal and you have to take that in consideration. But it is perfectly done. Perfectly done. The clip do you know, I'm not overstruck on the clip, to be honest with you. It sits a bit high. No, I'm saying that it has not come out of my pocket. It has not looked like it was going to come out of my pocket. So it's just, I don't know. I don't know what I wanted, but I know what I've got. So I just accept it. It's a clip. It holds it in my pocket. And to be honest with you, I don't tend to throw it in my pocket. If I've got other things in my pocket, I don't just throw this in. I don't want to ruin the, the outer look of it. But... This is what I'm carrying it in. And this I got from my friend at RG2 Leatherworks in Canada. I had bought this off him for a flashlight. I still use it for a big uh, O2 flash. Or not O2. What do you call them? Um, is it O2? Oh, it's gone out of my head completely. Gone out of my head completely. Anyway, I bought it for a flashlight. It goes on the hip. It has a belt loop on it. I love this. But look at this. My Medford just slips into it beautifully and I can carry it in the hip when I'm out working about and I just love it it also pulls out nicely so that's what I'm carrying it in most of the time but if there's nothing in my front pocket it just goes in on the clip and I haven't lost it yet now things that I think people are not going to like they're not going to like that there isn't a flow through there but you know I'm sorry, that doesn't bother me. This knife is not a little, you know, this to me is a little knife for doing oh, for doing your tricks badly. But I mean, these are the knives that you're going to do your little tricks with and have it fall. And Gosh, my hands have gone to pieces, but you know what I mean. These are fidget knives. These are knives that are going to do all the things that you want to fidget. This is not. It is purely a work knife for me. And an EDC knife because it's small enough, it's light enough. Four ounces is never going to bother me in my pocket, ever. Because um, I weigh the north side of 17 stone, four ounces ain't going to bother me. So there we go. I, I was nervous about bringing this out. I was nervous about doing it. Um, I'm not now. I have it done. And I'm so pleased with my buy. Um, you're going to see this on my channel a lot. Because, you know, much like my other um, my other knife, it is just out of this world. And I have been very fortunate. I have beautiful knives. And, and this is just adding to the high end. This is my highest end. Um, and I am over the moon with it. I really do like it. I like the fact that it's a bit different. Not many are using and carrying a Medford. And I am. And it's wee Paddy's potato peelers who started off with wee Ganzo knives and uh, I've gone on from there. And well, I haven't gone on. And it's funny. I mean, you, you talk, I haven't bought the new Ganzo because I'm bored. They're coming out with the same thing. I mean, they're not using the access lock anymore. They're not. Um, they're just throwing out the same knives with a wee bit of a different shape. I don't buy them just for the sake of it. I always liked the fact that there was different shapes and uh, and styles. And that's what's Greg doing in his business. He started off with big, huge, heavy knives that had a niche market. And he has moved slowly but surely through the market. To, he's now got a market where people want to carry his EDC knives. I mean, this is a proud carry. This is something that if I get over to Blade Show next year, God willing, um. This is the knife that will be in my pocket. This and my hinder and, you know, sort of a couple of my other higher end knives because they're pride carries. And when I meet knife people, I want to have nice things. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. Although sometimes my head tells me stop showing off. But there we go. I have a very weird head. I love the knife. I highly recommend it. Um, if you've got a high end knife that's in your head, go and watch a lot of videos on Greg's knives. There's more than this out there now. He does an awful lot of small ones um, and, and he's expanding all the time. He's doing button lock um, knives. 
in aluminium, never mind not even titanium anymore. So he's expanding. But I'm very happy with mine. I hope you like this review. Um, I hope it doesn't offend people who have been with me as a budget channel. It's just life, you know, it's moved on um, a little bit. But I still love my budget knives. Anyway, I'm away. Thank you so much for listening to my owl waffle. Take care. Paddy's away for a wee cup of tea. This owl one over here is stone cold. So, tea time. Bye now.